Okay, so this is off a four by eight sheet of quarter inch. And I had them put a 90 degree bend at 30 inches in, which left me, it's actually 19 and a half inches somehow up here. I don't know how, but um, that's how it came out. Anyway, um, it's a pretty, pretty good 90 degree bend. I'm not even gonna mess with it. I'm gonna leave it right there. So it's five feet, six inches wide. So that left me a few feet here. It left me 30 inches actually. So this 30 inches should match that right there uh, pretty closely. So what I'm gonna do is cut it here and along this solid line, not the X line. I decided not to do that. I'm gonna have this front edge stand up right here. So I have a little bit more support along that front edge and then it'll taper up to here at eight inches. It'll flatten out. This top piece will be eight inches and I have some one eighth, um, uh, eight inches wide flat. That's a 20 foot stick. I'm not going to use all that up for my other project. So I'll use that for a piece across the top. Um, so I've just mounted this to where as I run the torch along it, it's right in the middle of the torch. So good. I'm going to start down here though, and I'll work my way up that way. So we got the compressor charged up to full blast, the prime weld, let's power it up here. And it's on arc welding because that's what I was doing last. We'll flip it down to plasma cutting. Um, 24 should be not enough. Pressure gauge is showing 80 PSI. That's what I have it regulated to. That's perfect. Ground here, torch here. All right, we should be able to cut. This is the first really big, big project with a lot of cutting that I'm done with this prime weld. So I'm a little excited to see how it's going to go. this long clamp a long time ago and I was wondering when I was going to ever use it or how I was going to use it. It came in perfect. Just what I wanted it to do. This is the first really big cut I've done with this, so, or with any plasma cutter in my whole life. And I'm not disappointed. Okay, good. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. You can see it's pretty good as long as I'm using the edge and then I give a free hand and it gets all wonky. Okay, so I just clamped the piece of angle along the bottom there with those two clamps. So I can set this on here. And then I just clamped a piece right here on the back. I was hoping that would be enough to hold it while I arc weld it in, but I'm gonna have to tack it in. So that lines up really, really well. I mean, that's pretty sweet. I can't complain about that. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna tack this in just with a, a MIG welder just to get it tacked and then I'll burn it in with the arc welder. At least I'm going to burn the insides. I'll do this vertical part and this horizontal part down here with the uh, arc welder with 7018. Okay, got it all tacked in on the inside and the out with the MIG welder. Started with the arc welder about 93 amps. So this is 7018 332nd on quarter inch. And I went up to 98 amps. Uh, well, 102 amps. And it seems to be a little more consistent. I had a tough time getting started there. Could have just been my nerves and getting started and comfortable, but all right, let's see how it goes. Hey, I don't know if it's obvious to you, but the biggest mistake I'm making is not planning my hands. So, um, I'm fumbling around because I can feel my thumb get in the way as I get closer and closer so I'm trying to fold it out of the way and then I'm trying to get this hand out of the way and that's just not working. I got to figure something out here that'll work better for these um, inner corners. I'm not having trouble keeping an arc. I'm not having trouble watching my puddle. Um, I'm having trouble with my consistency here because I keep trying to move my hands to get them out of the way. So. I need to plan how I'm going to collapse my hands as I go into the corner, as my rod gets shorter, and then I'll um, then I'll do better here. Okay, better. Okay, now we're going to a 1 8 rod for the Z Weave at 110 amps. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so not terrible, it'll hold, not the best I've done, but not bad for not having done it in a year or longer. Some undercut right there on the side, I wouldn't hold it long enough there on the sides, at least right there I wasn't. It's all about consistency in your pattern, well it's not all about that, but that's a big part of it. Okay, got these cut out. This is 10 feet or 10 inches, quarter inch thick. And I cut these at six inches, I think. So um, these are gonna be side brackets that the uh, three points gonna connect into. So what I've got to decide is if I can bend them all consistently and then put the hole the same distance from the back of the bend and then still drill the hole where I want it um, in relation to the mag drill and my stand that I made because once I bend it this is going to be bent over and it might not fit on my stand that way so I might have to stand it up like this 
And so I'm going to go look at that here. <clears throat> so if I do bend it right there, that's not going to give me much. Um, you can see where my hole is there. I want to have my hole further in like more like that. So now if my bend is here and my piece stands up here, the mag drill doesn't look like it'll be in the way as I lower it. So I'll go ahead and bend these to 90 degrees, uh, make them all forward the same, and then I'll measure out maybe from the inside of the bend out here, um, decide where I want my hole, go ahead and drill my hole. And that these will be three quarter inch holes. Cool. Let's get started. So just trying to figure out how to do this consistently. Um, even though I bent right on the line, this measurement from here to where I drill my hole uh, is not going to be consistent if I measure from here to here and then the remaining distance here is going to vary. I don't want this distance varying because this is what's going to be against the bucket. And my pin needs to go straight through here and capture one of these like that. So straight through here, straight through another hole in this one right here, and then they need to be perfectly aligned. So the best way to do that, I think, is to measure from the inside here out for consistency. So basically, if I slide this into my mag drill, bam, it hits the mag drill base. I have a three quarter inch bit. That three quarter inch bit is going to go between here and here. That bit's going to go between this line and this line, these two heavy lines. So there's the center right there that it's going to hit. So I've measured that from here to here. Now I want to translate that into, I want to measure this distance now from here to here and then translate that to the other ones. And hopefully that'll work out. Perfect three quarter inch hole. Perfect. Now the real question, will this three quarter inch hitch pin fit down this? Oh yeah. Look at that fit. It's very, very little play. Very nice. Let's do three more. Another good hole. There's no ridge at the back to file off. Most of the metal shavings were there. Okay, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with the stand. It seems to be working well. It's punching slugs out like it's supposed to. Oh, that one's hot. Hot, 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 hot. That one's not so hot. Cool. That was uh, serendipitous. That just uh, happened. That that catches the slugs. <laughs> I didn't engineer it that way. I wasn't even thinking of that. Catches some of the oil that spills out too, so I don't have oil dripping all over the floor when it does drip through that hole. So that's nice. Okay, so I'm going to try to drill all four of these at once. I've got them clamped together. I've got a nice flat edge here. This edge over here is super irregular. Um, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be welding that edge on a piece of two inch steel. So that can be all irregular. This edge is nice and flat though. Um, I've got them clamped here, here, and here. I just use them one clamp to hold it in place, but my table's fairly flat, so it should be okay. It shouldn't rock or move. I'm uh, it's a one inch cutter. This is one inch of steel. So this is a real test. Um, I still don't know if this is a good idea to drill multiple pieces at once. I think if I have it clamped tight enough and it doesn't move, it should be okay, it shouldn't be bad for my cutter, but I'm gonna see what happens here. Turn some oil on. Turn the magnet on. OK, 
okay so nice smooth holes pretty happy yeah they're all perfectly even so that's good that'll make my uh, fabrication um, better when things are in a line in alignment okay good so we did the job I just had to pull the slug out almost every hole so they're perfectly spaced um, every direction so I'm very happy I marked the distance between here and here that's the width of my lower three-point arms the lift arms all right so we got this side tacked in this side I'm trying to line up before I tack it in obviously putting these pins in place isn't a uh, hundred percent because they can tip a little bit so I'm squaring it up here and I'm squaring it up there we can also square it up right here bottom to bottom but this I wasn't too worried about as long as the pins line up and they go in easy and they seem to Ta -da. okay so let's just leave it at that pins go in they don't look crooked from that direction or from this direction now this should give me my two inches that I need inside this took some finagling this was not weld these two plates here and here on a line and they kept this perpendicular this vertical so I had to cut them off re, re redo it what I ended up doing was just clamping that 3 16 piece right here between here and instead of clamping the whole thing I just clamped this right here with this 3 16 inside this gap and um, then I just taped the level there for plumb and then plumbed it, held it in place, tacked it, and just got to make sure all the pins come out. Okay, so that's pretty easy. And they do the bucket will dump. So that's good. Yeah, I have a little bit of play. Where's the hole? There it is. The part I couldn't understand was how this is plumb right here as it sits, okay? This was plumb as well. When you take the level and put it right here, it's plumb. In fact, let's just do that. <laughs> but look at it. So it must be that this piece is warped down. Um, and I think when I was clamping it there, these pieces are warped in a little bit like this. So that's what was throwing me off up here. So I'd originally tacked all these in and then found out that these were leaning both opposite directions <laughs> and it was obvious and it was embarrassing. So I went ahead and cut those off and re just taped this there, plumbed it, held it in place, made sure that was plumb and then tacked it in. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these tacked like this. This isn't gonna be a, um, not gonna burn them in yet. I need to go ahead and make a cross piece for up here. I need to make my brackets for down here for my hydraulic cylinder and that cylinder will come up and come up to right here to a cross piece and then I'll need to gusset that cross piece in. I may even need to gusset it right here as well. If the bucket's going to be banging into this 3 16 um, I may need to gusset this so it doesn't bend. Uh, also, I originally wanted to use quarter for this, but they didn't have quarter in two inch. So I ended up getting three sixteenths. Less happy with that. I almost wish I was using three eighths for this stuff right here and here. 
and maybe even one inch pins. I think if I was to do this again, that's what I would do. Um, it would have cost more, um, but everything else is three eighths pins and I'm really just using this as a scoop. I'm, I shouldn't be digging with it. You know, I shouldn't be like ramming into hard packed dirt with it. I should be just be scooping up dirt that's already dug up or piles of dirt. That's the plan with this. So that's why I'm probably not going to put a hardened edge on it. I guess if this edge starts to wear out or bend or whatever, maybe I'll put a toothed edge or a hardened edge on it.